Well, we we can't we, we can't live in this world without bumping into each other. Um, so we all live on this planet together, and it's Krishna's planet, and we're all Krishna's servants, whether we admit to it or not. Um, and even within our temples, within our communities, within our families, um, everyone is an individual. That's that's the spiritual conclusion. That's the essence of of Vaishnava Vedanta. So um, Krishna says to Arjuna, Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings here on this mm-hmm. battlefield. We all exist eternally as individuals. So that's that's a, a very important assumption, philosophical assumption, as to how we see the world. So everyone we see is an individual. They're all they're all making their own way to Krishna or to truth, to their idea of truth. And so in a temple, we're we're going to see Krishna on the altar. Our truth is Krishna. But I'm standing beside someone who's seeing a different Krishna, whose experience of Krishna is different. So everyone I see in the temple is different, and Mm -hmm. their perspective is different. And then I go to another temple, and they have a different guru and a a different deity. It's not Sri Sri Radha Madhava, Sri Sri Madhangopal. Who's Madhangopal? Radha Madhava is God. (laughs) And we haven't even gone into Christianity, Judaism, Islam, or, or atheism, or anything. Even just among ourselves, this is an issue. So insider, outsider, what does it mean? It's... It's okay. a, it's a kind of a bogus de- designation in one sense. That really? if you That's look a... if you look at it from a uh, a okay. philosophical perspective, it doesn't make sense. I I understand when it makes sense, why it makes sense, but but ultimately, no matter how we rationalize it, it really doesn't make sense. Okay, That's a very striking perspective. Uh, now I agree with our philosophical foundational understanding that we are all individuals. But at the same time, generally the way Krishna consciousness is taught, uh, there is understood that there has to be some kind of conformity, that the, we stop speculating and align ourselves with the authentic, author, author, authentic or authoritative understanding that is given in scriptures. So mm-hmm. to what extent does the need for conformity that naturally comes with belonging to any tradition uh, harmonize with or relate with the natural individuality that is innate to every person. So when we take this conceptual idea of individuality and mm. and and bring this heavenly idea down to the earthly plane, then we hear like Bhaktivinoda Thakur says we should associate with like-minded devotees. So it's not you can't just associate with anyone and everyone. Everyone's got different opinions. So common sense dictates that we associate it with with like-minded people, and that will enthuse us and inspire us to go on our path. So we all club together and we we raise a little flag and we fly our flag, and we're a little group of stamp collectors or devotees of Krishna or whatever it is, uh, army officers. We've all got our little clubs, and we have to understand that's how uh, human psychology works and human emotional need works. And also spirituality, it's the same principles. We need to club together because none of us exist as an individual. We just are individuals. But to exist, to flourish, we need the association of others. We need that emotional support. And ultimately, um, what we're looking for, all our acharyas say, is love. 